Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on Structured Products, hosted by My Wealth Investment, a regulated financial services provider and a subsidiary of Regenesis Business School. My name is Sharnay Urifir, and I'm a financial advisor at My Wealth Investments, and I have the pleasure of introducing our host and speaker this afternoon. With me on stage is Aniki van Rooyen, our CEO of My Wealth Investments. Aniki has 25 years of experience in the financial industry and has been a trader, a stockbroker, and a fund manager. Then we also have Brian McMillan, who's also had a long, uh, a long career in the financial industry, starting out at Standard Bank, at, a, at the Wealth Management and Derivatives Division, before moving to Investec, where he's been the head of structured products for the last 12 years. Together, he and his team have issued over 140 products across fixed income, equities, and commodities meaning Brian truly is the expert. I believe this will be an interesting and insightful webinar for you all. And with this, I hand over to Aniki. Thank you. Thank you, Shanae. Welcome to all our attendees and welcome to you, Brian. We feel honored to have you here today. I've decided to do this webinar a little bit differently. In order for us all to understand these structured products better, Brian will actually do a formal presentation, which you guys will all be able to view on your screens. And then you're welcome to post questions in the chat box on the screen, uh, which we will deal with after the presentation. So I've asked Brian to, to spend some time with us today to help us to understand these products better because they are increasing in popularity as a building block of a diversified portfolio and Investec is currently the market leaders with about 26 billion rand under management. So Brian, I don't want to waste time. I'm going to hand over to you and I look forward uh, to, to go through this presentation with you. And I would like to understand then whether this product is an ETN or ETF um, as you go through it. And then we'll focus on the questions from the attendees. Thank you and enjoy this with us. Thanks very much. Thanks, Anaki. Um, I'm just going to share the presentation. I, I think it does make... Um, I just got a bit of feedback. Yeah, thank you. There we go. So um, this particular product, um, I. You know, structured products have been in the market for the last 20 years. But um, what we've seen is a, a massive uptick in the number of structured products being issued by a number of different banks. Uh, life insurance companies are now issuing structured products. And in the current market, they really make a lot of sense for the South African investor. Sense for the South African investor. Um, the South African investor over the last few years, I think, has, um, you know, matured. Uh, certainly, we've seen that from our side. And the ability of, of structured products, I think their they're sort of magical um, uh, thing about them is that they give this uh, ability to provide capital protection while also providing equity upside. And, you know, in these volatile times, um, which I will take you through in the, in the presentation, it's really been um, a time where people are looking for equity type returns because perhaps they're approaching retirement or perhaps they're underfunded in their retirement uh, space and they have to stay in equity markets to get those, those returns, um, but they, they cannot take the risk on the downside. And so in a time when people are moving out of uh, equity markets into bonds, traditionally as they approach retirement, we've seen a lot of people staying in equity markets, but using structured products as one of the, uh, the cornerstones of their portfolio because they can do so. So I'm going to explain a little bit about um, structured products. And then I'd like to work an example in um, which we have a current product out there. And uh, I think by just showing you how we put that together at Investec, uh, it might make a bit more sense on how all of these structured products are, are built because they're all built on the same premises. 
so um, what is a structured product? You know, a lot of people ask us, um, and it, it's such a wide range of different things. But I think um, the major thing that defines a structured product is it's a term product. So it has a beginning and an end, unlike a unit trust, which can go on forever. Um, a structured product has a defined ending period. So that might be three years, four years, five years, um, even as short as six months. Um, and it also, um, one of the defining features is it, of these is at the beginning, it tells you what you're going to get at the end. So for example, if the index that it's tracking is up, it will give you one times uh, gearing or perhaps two times the return. So it tells you upfront what it's going to give you if the market performs a certain way. And it does have a set time period. Um, all structured products are, def are uh, linked to the performance of an underlying. So they do have a, an element of derivatives in them. Um, and I'll show you where, where those come through. But generally in the South African market, they, they tend to be linked to equity markets or uh, indices. So the S&P 500, the top 40 index, or in Europe, the Eurostox 50 index. They also um, are, are designed in such a way to, to give you this capital protection. So, and what we mean by capital protection is that if you put in a set amount of money, um, if the market doesn't perform as expected, you can get your cash back if you have 100% capital protection. Sometimes they only give you half the amount of capital protection. So if the index falls 49%, uh, for example, you get your money back. But if it falls 51, you start losing money from that. So there's partial and full capital protection. And then um, because, as I said, because they have this uh, ability to give you upside growth in a, in a market, plus the capital protection on the downside, we're really seeing the expansion in financial planning uh, tools of these particular products. So um, I think the, I just wanted to start off, I found this very interesting the other day from, uh, um, from a website uh, that we follow, Visual Capitalist. And it was asking, how do you invest as an investor in these turbulent times in a falling market? And, and you'll see this, um, I'll bring this in when we, I show you our current product. But I think when you, know, when you have a falling market like, like we have at the moment, when we've got rising interest rates, where we have a war in Ukraine, um, it really means that people should go back to basics on a company. You know, when they're looking at companies, when they're looking at uh, indices, um, where are the companies that have got decent earnings growth, that are defensive, decent earnings growth. Where is the area where they're paying, they have the cash to pay out dividends? Um, and you'll see how I bring that in later on in our, our current pro, uh, product. So improving fundamentals are really a leading indicator that you should be looking at when you have a, a market which is a bear market or a falling market like we have at the moment. Um, the other area is that, um, you know, dividend growth over the last 20, 30 years has outperformed inflation. So the growth in dividends has tend to outperform um, the inflation. And we're seeing that at the moment that, um, you know, even though we've got very high inflation uh, over the last few years, the dividend growth uh, on things like the S&P 500 has been very good. And those companies that can continue to pay dividends during these tough times um, tend to be more the value stocks, uh, which is, again, going back to those fundamentals. Where is the value in, in the market? And uh, for that reason, we, we, it's showing here that value has outperformed the growth stocks. So, you know, from sort of two, three months after COVID, we saw a big rally in, in a lot of the tech stocks, the, the growth stocks uh, really performed very well. S&P 500, for example, the, the top 10 um, you know, uh, stocks by market cap were all tech stocks, things like Netflix, uh, things like Alphabet, Apple, all of those, and they did very well. 
This year, however, we, what we've seen is we've seen a switch out of those. Um, they ran too far. Now we have the issue of inflation coming through and those stocks have actually pulled back severely. Um, and what we've seen is that um, stocks and value stocks that pay good dividends have been what the ones that haven't fallen as much. And in fact, um, over the last year, we've seen that, um, that the value stocks uh, index, um, the one that we're going to look at in, the, in a little bit, is actually flat over the last year, while the MSCI World Index is down about 17% over the last year. So the, even though the MSCI World rallied um, you know, into the end of the year, the, the downturn has been severe so far this year, whereas the value stocks tend to hold their value over time. Um, so I think one of the best ways to, to actually look at uh, a structured product and to understand it is, is to take a live example. And this particular um, example, I'm going to use the current uh, product that we at Investec have out in the market. It's a, a global select dividend geared growth is the name of the product. Um, and if you have a look at um, how it works, it has a term to maturity. So this one will last uh, three and a half years. So trading on the 6th of October, three and a half years later, it's out 6th of April in 2026. And that's when it will expire. It gives you the performance of uh, the dividend select index, which I'll go into in a little bit more uh, detail in a moment. But essentially, it will give you two times whatever that, that index grows. So gearing means uh, if the index is up 10%, you've got two times gearing, it, this particular product will pay you 20%. Um, and that is uncapped. So if the index you know, has a stellar performance, goes up 50%, you would get 100% return in that case. And that return, which I'll go back to in a little bit more detail later, but is actually adjusted for the RAND US dollar. So you also have a little bit of RAND hedge if the index actually grows. The capital protection that I was talking about earlier, in this particular product, you have 100% capital protection in RANDs. So if you put in 100,000 RAND as an investor, and in three and a half years time, this index is down, uh, you would get back your 100,000 Rand. And there's no fees or anything that come off of that. The 100,000 Rand is the amount that you would get back at the end of that time, should the index be down. Should the index be up, of course, you'll get two times the performance of that. Um, all the advisor fees that, that Investec have got in this, for, for financial advisors, um, we actually at Investec pay that across to the advisor. So, uh, none of those fees come out of the, the actual investor's fees. As I said, 100,000 Rand in, you get back a minimum of 100,000 Rand there. And um, minimum investments are from, uh, from 50,000 Rand. Um, each share that we list on the market is 1,000 Rand, so it'd be 51,052. Um, and um, I'll show you some details later on of, of what the dates are around that. So. So I thought this is, this is quite an interesting um, uh, slide because it shows you how we at Investec build this product in the background. So as an investor, you are buying from Investec a um, equity linked note, which is listed on the JSE, which promises to pay you what, what we have said in the term sheet, which is if the index is down, you get back 100% of your money. If the index is up, we give you two times that uh, performance. But how do we actually do it in the background? And what we did is, is looked at it from the perspective of us receiving 100,000 Rand. So at Investec, you pay us 100,000 Rand. And what we do with that money is, first thing that we do is uh, we take that to our treasury and we say to our treasurer who's paying interest an interest on on this money we say to him how much do i have to give you today you don't have to pay me any interest but how much do i have to give you today to get a hundred rand in three and a half years time now that is called a zero coupon bond so the treasurer says to me if you give me 74 rand today with current interest rates 
I will give you back a hundred rand in three and a half years time, which is roughly around about 8% um, over three and a half years. Now, I've, I placed that 74,000 rand with the, with the bank, and knowing that in three and a half years time, then I'll be able to get back a hundred rand. And that's how I can provide this capital protection. Rand. Yeah. And uh, we then take the balance of that. We pay out the, the fees that I mentioned, 1.25% uh, to uh, the advisor, 75, uh, sorry, 75 basis points in year two and three. And we are left uh, as a structured products team with uh, 23,000 uh, Rand, which we then go and buy a derivative or an option. Now, in this particular case, what we want to do is give uh, investors exposure to this, this global select dividend index. And we went along to, to a number of the international banks and said, we want to buy some options from you. Um, how much does it cost to buy 100,000 rands worth of options over this particular index? And in this case, they said to us, it'll cost you 11,000 rand. Um, now 11 and a half thousand rand. We said, well, we've got 23,000 rand. So instead of buying one option, we'd like to buy two options. And that is how we get this gearing of two times because what happens in the option is, the option at the end of three and a half years time, if that index is up 20%, it will pay me a 20% return on that 100,000 Rand. But I now have two of those options. So that's why I'm going to get 40% return on the 100,000. And that really is how all structured products work. They've worked on the basis of set amount is put into essentially a bond, which will grow over time to give the capital protection. The balance is used to buy options over that. And now remember options, if the, if the market falls, that option we've paid for already, it, um, it just expires worthless and all you get back is, is the value of that bond. So that's really how all structured products are put together and how this particular one is, is done as well. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the, the Global Select Dividend 100 Index, because what we did, um, you know, when we're putting this together in Investec, we have a lot of um, input from all our research analysts. We have our economists. Um, we have access to our foreign exchange desk. They've got a view on what the Rand dollar will be in the future. Um, all of that is, is taken in and we say, where are we in the market at the moment? What is uh, the mood out there in the market? And what can we provide to the market you know, that, that would um, be appealing investment uh, at the moment? So we went out and said, there's a lot of fear out in the market at the moment. Interest rates keep ticking higher and higher in, in the US and Europe. Um, we've got that inflation, we've got the, the war in Ukraine. There's quite a lot of volatility in the market. And so what investors we, we feel would be looking at is to invest in something with a low volatility and in, as I was discussing earlier, going back to basics and looking at value stocks over growth stocks. Now, this particular index, the Global Select Dividend Index, what it does is um, in the global index, it's a stocks index um, out of Germany, but it's a global 1800 shares. So the 1800 largest shares around the world in developed markets um, they track that, that uh, index. And what this particular one is, uh, the, the select dividend, is they take the 100 best paying dividend stocks out of that 1800 and they make an index out of that. Now, what you end up with is a high dividend yielding index, but also one where it has high value stocks in it because those are the, the companies. It, it also looks at it and says, has it paid a consistent dividend for the last five years? So it's not just companies that pay a one-off high dividend. They have to have had dividend growth over the last five years to be included in this. And what you end up with is a um, 100 shares in an index. And um, it tends to have, because of the nature of it, we see that it's got a high percentage of insurance companies, banks, and resource companies because those companies tend to pay higher dividends 
they have very sound cash flows, they're very defensive types of stocks. When we look at the, the country weightings as well, um, you know, as South African investors, uh, most people are looking for diversification. Um, this is very much a, a developed market world index, and it has uh, the highest exposure is to the US market, then to Australia, um, and then to Japan. So it's, it's highly diversified across the world, but it's giving you developed markets uh, exposure. So um, <clears throat> this, this uh, performance graph I just wanted to show was, um, as I mentioned, over the last year. Now, the dividend select index is the dark line, um, and it, it rallied last year along with the rest of the market. But you can see when the markets fell, it's actually over the last year uh, only fallen slightly. In fact, uh, I checked it this morning, it's down 0.5% over the last year. Sure, it, it had rallied up and now, but on a year's view, it has only moved down uh, half a percent. Where if you look at the, um, the MSCI World Index, uh, while it rallied quite strongly towards the end of last year and outperformed this index, it then, when uh, the market started falling, it has actually fallen 17% over the last year. So. Uh, significantly more falls when the market is um, having a bear market um, against this dividend index, which has performed almost flat for the last year. And that's the reason why we, we chose this particular index. Now, we understand as well that, you know, on a, on a dividend index, if the market is going to recover, um, that you know, a growth growth index will recover faster than a, than the value indices. Um, however, because we're giving you two times the return on this index, we feel that makes up more than uh, you know what we're expecting from growth stocks over the next few years. And we looked at this over the last, um, in fact, twenty five years. Now we started off in nineteen ninety nine with the, when this index started. And we said, what is the performance three and a half years later? And that's that dark line that you see on the, on the presentation there. So three and a half years after 1999, uh, the index was actually up uh, 80%, which is, it had a really good run of, over those three and a half years. If you'd bought our product, however, you would be up 160%. So your 100,000 Rand would have now been worth 260,000 Rand. Um, and we did that every single day from inception. So every day we looked at it, the 1st of January, 2nd of January, three and a half years later, and so on. And we built up this particular graph. Now you can see that, you know, in 2008, 9, 10, when the market had the global financial crisis, the dark blue line, you can see that this uh, index performed quite badly. But because uh, the holder of this product, you would have not had any negative returns. You would have just received your money back in that case. And you can see there that uh, the lighter blue line just uh, goes to the, the zero line, no return over that period. And again, um, coming out of that global financial crisis, and we're hoping that you know in three and a half years time, we'll be coming out of this turmoil. Inf inflation will be under control again. We're seeing them, you know, uh, increasing rates quite aggressively at the moment. Um, and at that point, and actually that index actually had its highest three and a half year uh, return, which was 114%, which meant investors who invested in uh, uh, this product would have got 228% return. So all of a sudden, 100,000 Rand investment would have been worth uh, 228,000 Rand. Um, and, and we looked again, you know, even in COVID, there was only a short period where in, this index would have been down over a three and a half year period. But the, uh, the product again would have given you back that 100% capital protection. This, this particular graph I'm just showing is, you know, um, even through the fact that we had quite a long period in the global financial crisis where it had a negative return, um, it's 75% of the time, this product over three and a half years or, or this index over three and a half years 
has had a positive return. And the average return over that time for this particular index has been around about 15.3%. Um, and then because the product actually gives you double that, you would expect this product to have actually returned uh, 30 odd percent. But it's actually more than that. The, the average product return is 44% because remember, if you were in the index, you would have had uh, quite a lot of time when you would have had a negative return. Mm. And you can't have a negative return in this particular product. Uh, again, we, look, we looked at this product against the MSCI World Index. So, you know, early on in, in the early 2000s, this product performed very well against the MSCI World Index. But in fact, um, <coughs> and the dividend index actually, over time, has actually performed almost like the MSCI World Index. In fact, the historical average return of the MSCI World Index is about 18%. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, this index, the average per percentage return over three and a half years is 15. But if we as investors had to go and buy options over the MSCI World Index, they, we, they would have cost us 23,000 mm. Rand and not 11,600 mm. Rand. And so you would have only had one times upside of the MSCI World Index, where in this particular product, you've got two times. And that, once you, you put that onto the positive returns that it's had, you know, this product has outperformed that, that MS, having an MSCI type uh, index as significantly over time. So that's really the, the, the product that we have out there at the moment. Um, um, and I hope that explained how we put it together by using options and a bond. So you're really getting the best of both worlds. We've got some sort of bonds which give you capital protection. Uh, the downside of a bond is, you know, while it will, will give you your capital back, um, you only have limited upside because it pays interest. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is putting the best parts of a bond together, which is the capital protection and the best parts of equity markets, which over time have significantly outperformed the interest you could have received from bonds. So that, that's really why I think they, they've been far more popular over the last few years as people come to terms with, a, with that. Um, just from a... Um, a listing point of view now, um, there's a lot of way, different ways to buy these structured products. As I mentioned earlier, some of the life companies, they put them within endowments. Um, you can buy them in the OTC market. But at Investec, what we've done is we decided to go with the listed uh, instrument on the JSC. Now, the listed instrument on the JSC gives it a lot more flexibility because one of the big problems with structured products originally when they were done in the early 2000s, and you'll remember, Anaki. Um, Thank you uh, for you giving know. my age on <laughs> um, That's, you know, there were a number of different international banks who came and sold structured products into the market. Um, you know, two years into a five-year product, perhaps a client wanted to divest, perhaps they're moving, somebody died. Um, it was very difficult to find out what the value of, of yeah. your structured product yeah. was, to go and find out how do I unwind this? What are the rules? Um, what's the current price? And we overcame a lot of those problems by actually listing them on the JSC. Now, by listing it on the JSC, what we do is we provide a daily price of this particular uh, instrument. Mark to market daily. Mark to market daily. And all we do is we take what is the value of the bond today? What are the value of the options today? What's fee out? and that forms the basis of the price. We then have a spread, a mid to bid spread of 1%, and that is the price that we provide to the JSE every single day. Now that means that an investor wants to value his portfolio. Firstly, they get it on a daily basis um, on their online platforms, or they get a statement at the end of the month, or if they want to sell this particular product, they can just phone up their stockbroker and actually sell it on the JSC like a normal share. And that's brought a lot of transparency to these structured products, which again has mm. brought more popularity.
So how do people go about then to to purchase these structured yeah. products? So we, we, what we do is we go out to um, a, a large group of uh, independent financial advisors and also to all the stockbroking firms. And well, we all offer financial them services across. providers, mm. basically. Yes, those that have the license that, you know, can trade uh, warrants and notes or have a derivative license um, or a structured uh, deposits license. So mm. there's a number of, um, you know, financial advisors who've got a lot of these um, these licenses who understand these and they are the ones that would advise you how to put them into the portfolio you know how much of your portfolio should be in structured mm -hmm. products how much should be in bonds how much should be in equity so on so uh, from that point of view your financial advisor should be able to tell you and then the online stockbroking platforms or your stockbroker they also have access to these and one of the, the things about uh, structured products, which unlike shares, so we build the tranche, we build the book of like, much like an IPO. Um, we go out to the market, we say, how much of these do you want to buy? They bring all uh, the, the cash to, together for us and we trade one bulk amount. And uh, uh, we put that together. Our trade date is the 6th of October. We ask all our IFAs to tell us how much they want um, in that book built by the 30th of September. Now that what that means is that you know when we're when we're going to our Treasury Department inside Investec and we say to them, um, you know we have 100 million rands worth to deposit um, with you for three and a half years, we have that pricing power within. Uh, the bank, you know, so if I went to the bank and said, I've got 50,000 Rand to give you for three and a half years, my rate wouldn't be nearly mm. as good as, mm. as the 100 million Rand that, you know, we're, mm. we're now able mm. to, to use. And similarly, when we're going to the, uh, the option providers, those international mm. banks who are, are selling the options to us, we have that pricing power mm. again. And again, we get that advantage of using those big sizes. Mm. No, I think the transparency is a huge advantage for the for private investors and also the cost structure because it's very expensive for a private investor to approach a bank to put these option structures in place. And then um, I just wanted to quickly ask you, can clients only invest in RANDs so they can't invest from an offshore platform in, in our other currencies? Right, so, so this one is listed on the JSC. Um, so they would only be able to, to use RANDs to invest in. And are um, you going to list other ones in future where we would be able to put other currencies? Yes, um, definitely. So, so we, we list about four of these a year on the JSE and um, then we tend to do two or three offshore. Our next one, for example, is going to be um, a product which we're rolling called Asia Pacific. Um, it's actually a global index. Um, and uh, that will be available for investors in US dollars. Um, again, we're going to start the process of selling that between now and December, um, and we'll send the full details out, out to you. But essentially, that one will be a US dollar. So you'll have to make use of investors' offshore um, allowances mm. or through asset swap. Okay. Uh, and that investment will be in Guernsey. This particular one is listed on the JSC and has the rent. And even though it does have that small component of, of the US dollar, so whatever the, um, the return is gets adjusted by the rand dollar, um, the, uh, the payout that you receive in the rand that we receive up front will all be in rand. And then the last thing I wanted to really discuss was, was credit risk. So, yes. Counterpoint you know, it's, it's, it's important, I think, for, you know, people looking at structured products, who am I actually buying this product from? And that's why these are written by large insurance companies and banks, because mm -hmm. um, when you buy this, this equity linked note, you've got to be firstly sure that that institution that you're buying it on will be there in three and a half years mm -hmm. time to, to give you your money back. And uh, I know we were talking earlier about saying, you know, to try and do this on your own, you as a financial, um, you know, uh, literate person and access to all of these, finds it very difficult to go and build your own structured product mm. because, um, you know, expensive. you don't have the size, it, it's expensive. 
but you also don't want to buy these options from a, an institution you know that's that's you don't know if they're going to be there in three and a half years mm. time so the credit risk on this particular product is to investec bank limited it's senior unsecured um, bonds of investec and uh, we also credit link it to jp morgan okay so that's one of the largest banks in the world so from that point of view it's important when you're buying a structured product to look at you know who is the credit risk um, are they a reputable company all of those things and then on the tax side you know at the end of three three and a half years time um, you know you, you're going to be a holder of an instrument for for over three years but they not necessarily um, receive the 9c it's it's not a share as such it's a, an equity linked note so we um, ask investors to actually find their own financial advice mm. on whether this would be on capital or or income account. So, um, shameless plug, I'll just, my latest product. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, it is closing next Friday, the 30th of September. So speak to your financial advisor or your stockbroker. Um, they will make the application uh, on your behalf. Uh, we will trade this on the 6th of October and then three and a half years later, um, this product will expire. But that doesn't mean you can't sell it in between. So we do see that there is a little bit of trading in these products, but most of the people actually hold them to the term. But also important, I think, to mention that these financial services providers have to be registered as distributors with Investec. And yes, that takes quite a so. bit of time. So for somebody to try and register now as an FSP, they're probably yeah. not going to no, make no. the deadline. So no. investors should ensure that this, the FSP is registered already. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Thanks Thank for you the very time. much. That uh, gives us all a much better understanding of these popular products. And um, Shanae, do we have any questions from, from any of the attendees that you have noticed? Nothing. All right. Well, um, people are welcome to forward any questions to us via the, the My Wealth mailbox or contact us at My Wealth Investments or even Investec, Brian McMillan. We are happy to answer any questions that you have on these popular products. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It was wonderful to have you here at My Wealth Investments and Regenerative Business School. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.